All right, all right. It's that time of the season. Spring anime 2024 in a nutshell by Mr. Giguk himself. Let's see what he has to say. Spring has once again sprung on us and has given us one of the most hype seasons of anime in a while. I mean... One of the most hype anime seasons in a while. I would agree. The lineup of the anime that we're having this season, maybe it's just me, but there's just so many sequels of shows that we're watching. Misfit of Demon King Academy, Irregular Magic High School, Mushoku Tensei, Konosuba, and so many more. On top of that, there's like hidden special gems like Elf Bright here, right? Obviously, Spice and Wolf's not like a... It's, it's not a new show, but they're making a remake of it, right? This season is actually cracked. How could I not be excited in a season with more Konosuba, Slime, Mushoku Tensei? That's but right. Look, I'm a reformed man now. Maybe it doesn't all have to be about isekai or degeneracy. Maybe it's time for some wholesomeness. And what could be... Wholesomeness? What are we going here? Okay, this is Tai Daima Okaeri. Be more wholesome this? than a loving couple raising their cute little baby boy. It's 2024 now. Nothing wrong with some feel good. Oh, wait! So this anime is about a gay couple that raises gay- Oh! This is a unique taste. I've never seen this before. It'd be an anime and- Oh, they're talking about- Hiro sounds an alpha and I'm an omega. <laughs> Actually, I'm a sigma. I'm a sigma top. Okay. But alphas and omegas and pheromones. Oh. Okay, so the raising kids is not really the focus, but rather it's the yaoi interactions between these um, uh, house husbands. Not house husbands, obviously one is the house husband. I think the one on the left is the bottom, right? And the one on the right is most likely the top. If you look at the body position, wait for it, wait for it. If you look at the body positioning of the bottom and the top, you can kind of clearly see the, <laughs> the dynamics. <laughs> okay, okay. Pheromones. Oh, I think I've... Yeah. Seen this somewhere before. Omega Where? is the lowest ranking species in the Omega verse Alpha verse universe. Omega tend to have a strong, sweet scent. Heat, which are, are you guys in Omega? When the body is ready for they mating. Knotted. Mate, knotted? Not? Oh, wait, wait, wait. This is some furry shit. The moment you said knotted, no, no, no. Okay, the Omega is in heat and releases pheromones and it makes the Alpha kind of go there. This genre is. The fanfic. What what the fuck is Gigguk doing? What is he? He definitely has a first suit, dude. Sex with them and comes inside them. Alphas to cannot from resist pain. the smell of an omega in heat. <laughs> Are you guys an omega in heat? <laughs> Why? I don't you know. know. Never thought I'd say this. JoJo fans seem pretty straight right now. <laughs> Intro theme. He's been there keeping that for like a, a lot decade of plus. Anime we've got to go through, but thankfully, watching anime has never been more of a breeze thanks to today's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. No, what is it? Opera GX. It's a browser and no ads. You know what to do? Use your discount code Gigook for your first month of subscription, ten dollars off, and back to our regular scheduled content. Opera GX for sponsoring us, and with that said, let's get back to spring anime. Ah, this is the bartender anime that I didn't really give a chance. Not because it's bad. As an anime reaction channel, I need to be giving content about anime that my audience wants to watch, and they only want to watch shitty isekais. But I hear the bartender one is actually pretty good. Tequila, okay? Just a little bit. I got box wine. Jungle juice, bro. Peach snaps, triple set, just to make it right. Peach vodka, triple That's an set. old video, bro. And there you have it, homeboy! Subarashi. This cocktail. Once in a decade. <laughs> I was gonna say once in a decade talent, but bro took him to the hospital now. This is a separate character, right? This is just a funny cut, right? Oh, no, this is some old school shit. A remake right. of Bartender? Even when the first one... Oh, it's a remake. Oh, I didn't know that. So we have a Spice and Wolf remake and Bartender remake. Ed, eight, 18 years ago? This already felt like a pretty underground anime back in the day, but this show was an absolute vibe. Even though I couldn't even drink in England when it was first. Ed, even though I couldn't even legally drink in England when it was. Yeah, don't they have like pretty loose, you know, drinking rules, you know, back on the in, in, in England? Was first airing. Is it radio, you might be there it is. Team, if there you're looking is. for a nightcap show, this is it. You have different characters at a bar going through their own daily troubles, and a bartender who can serve you the perfect drink in that exact moment based on his own deductive reasoning and. 
<laughs> what is this reaction, bro? Hold up, hold Bartender up. Can serve she you drinks the perfect it. Perfect drink in that exact moment, <gasps> based on his own deductive reason. <laughs> bro, <laughs> that drink fucking gave her a domain expansion. No, this is like some food war shit, right? You drink something and you got your entire fucking memories from birth to now, just all in the fucking in the matter of seconds, right? You see the truth of the world because the drink was so good reasoning and observation skills. So basically, he's the Sherlock Holmes of getting wankered. But that's not cool. the only thing getting a remake because Spice and Wolf is back. Yes, the Spice and Wolf. No Dune. Dune. Lisa Nagaib! Lisa Naga! I saw that! Paul Atreides! Muadib! There he is. And Wolf, this is some furry shit, right? This is, a. Uh... I forget what it's called. Zoo something. Zootopia? No, that, that's, a, that's a movie. I forget, but apparently this is an actually kind of good Beastars. Now, with Beast, does Beastars go into Omegas being in heat? Is this wolf an Omega? Or is this wolf an Alpha? <laughs> is, is there that kind of like, <laughs> you know, very dynamic of a <laughs> Beta Alpha, Omega Alpha, Sigma shit, bro? Not. This was a widely beloved show back in the day and one of my personal favorites. But a reminder, when this show first came out, George W. Bush was still president of the United States. We are not talking to the same anime fans anymore. So let me explain okay. this in the way that the current... I thought a 9-11 joke was about to come up. ...generation can understand. Okay, hold on a second. <clears throat> All right, Benzie. man. Hear me out. Let me Bussin. yap a bit about the hottest shit that just dropped since the Grimace Shake. Spice okay. and Wolf. I ain't playing when I say this shit be goaded. No for cap. real, for so real. So it's about our bro craft here. Absolute Riz Lord Look Maxer on his Sigma grind set trying to chase that paper as some traveling merchant type shit. He's a man about that bread. No wheat. One day, bro comes up and <laughs> All finds All bread, Bae no wheat. Ride. Bae be acting like she be made in Ohio before proclaiming that she is Holo, the wise wolf Hodo. lord, top G of the land and certified level 10. Yeah. No, 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 no. This is top. This is bottom G. No, no, no. Do you guys know this guy? This is Bottom G on TikTok. He kind of looks like Andrew Tate and he does all these dances. People call him Bottom G. Top G of the land and certified level 10. Yeah. <laughs> Bro thinks she'd be capping, to which Bay claps back with, Nah, I'd win. And shows off her limited edition. <laughs> nah, I'd win has become Gen Z humor. I say it's more like anime humor, but definitely the younger audience, right? There's probably more of them. Nah, I'd win. Gen G shit. For real, for real. Bussin' shit. You gotta get a fucking. Is she's too old now? I don't know. Is it still count? Edition Fortnite skin, persuading Bro into letting her slide with him. Vibe check. It should be about Bro and Bay skibbity bopping through different towns, speaking fluent Japanese. Skibbity mentioned. With the faint promise that one day he'll slide into her DMs. Not. There's no shot he wrote this by himself. He probably fucking put this through Chat GPT and give me give me a synopsis of Spice and Wolf, but through Gen like Gen Z humor lingo. 100% I'd, I'd be impressed if he got this script all by himself I don't know it'd be smart I, I feel like using ChatGPT for something like this would be pretty smart Not selling you yet all right peep game and lock in one word economics now that topic may sound like l riz but hold yeah, on let it's it dumb riz. by just yapping bro is able to stack some mad paper by phantom taxing these npcs with bros thousand iq levels and hustle nomics because okay. he knows they're always better than hakari this sounds Holy sus, shit, but it's not trust ending. me this yapping be teaching you more than you'd ever learn in hustlers university in True. conclusion the show is 10 out of level 10 gats give it a higher w riz with a Oh god, <laughs> level 10 Gias Gibbity Ohio Dub Riz with a Grimace Shake. Now with the Grimace Shake, holy fuck. Christ, Gen Z lingo is just going too fucking crazy, bro. That's actually insane. Bro just spat. That was some bars, bro. How long did he just do that for? Holy shit, that was like a minute. It's going off. I'm actually impressed. That shit was fucking peak. I think those two shows were a blast from the past. We're just getting started with some of the other sequels coming out. Did Which animation is actually making a season three? <laughs> no. We've got some of the most beloved and highly anticipated fantasy anime coming back for another season. Demon Slayer. Eurocamp is back. <laughs> Demon Slayer hasn't aired just yet, right? Soon. I think it's airing in March. In May, sorry. In May, right? Because it's got a... The arc that it's handling, I think, is like the Hashira training arc, which is a little bit shorter than everything else. So didn't they also get leaked? Yo, didn't this shit actually get leaked? Did they have a movie on it that got leaked? I forget. I swear to God, Demon Slayer got leaked with the Konos the control fucking leaks they had like a month ago. Demon Slayer, Eurocamp is back, which means so is the economy of the Yamanashi Prefecture. My hero is in a seventh season now. Seven. Is it good? Seven seasons. I hear that My Hero Academia has been just falling off like crazy. I hear like first two, three seasons just fucking peak, just peak cinema. And then something happens. I don't know what. Production value, pacing, maybe lack of interesting arcs. And it just got eh. 
And then it came back really hot for like the last season, which was like the All Out War or some shit, right? Isn't that like the Marineford arc of fucking My Hero? I don't really know. I don't read it. I don't watch it. It's just random comments I'm reading online. And then people are just very mad. Really, really mad about where the anime is going. But seven seasons in, man. Seven fucking seasons in. Seventh season. Ushoku Tensei is continuing with Rudy realizing he's actually a fate fan by proving he is the bone of his sword. <laughs> Black Butler? What? One day, guys, I kind of know I am the bone of my sword meme because of, you know, we just play so much fucking fake Grand Order and different memes, but... I am the bone of my sword. Mushoku Tensei. They fucking teasing us, bro. They talking teasing over the fucking clip. The fucking, uh, what's it called? The turning point three that's about to happen. Fate fan by proving he is the bone of his sword. Black Butler? We're getting more Black Butler? What is- Is it doing well? I see one reactor. I think it's called the Lala Fluff Bunny. So I think she's doing Black Butler. It does wonders on our channel. But I wonder if, is like, you guys watch this shit? Should we watch this shit? I feel like this is not- I, I feel like we're not target market for this. Happening right now! Bartender, Spice and Wolf, Hibiki Euphonium, Black Butler. What am All I, remakes? my college years Old again? Animes? Oh wait, they're giving us more no game, no life? Wait, no. This is not- <laughs> That is cruel! That is cruel! We got a fucking another no game, no life copyright over here. We had Liar Liar, I think a season or two seasons ago. And I kind of just dropped that shit because it was like, yo, where's the fucking mind games? These fucking major just hacking the phones and that's the fucking cheat. Maybe I didn't give enough episode to try, but there is this one. God's game we play. I have heard pretty decent things about this. Not more no game, no life. This has the games. This has the color palette. But there's no uncomfortably incestuous relationship between the main duo. I guess that's something from 2014 that we're not going to see revive this season. <laughs> The irregular magic high school immediately. Oni. <laughs> I guess no game, no life really did get carried by, you know, Shido, huh? It's the lolly. There's the incestual lollies. The power of incestual lollies, bro. Between the main duo. I guess that's something from 2014 that we're not going to see revive this season. Oni Sama. Oh, what the fuck? Okay, yeah. what do we have here? The launch of 7G? Well, lads, better get those towers running before the Brits try to burn them down. <laughs> I don't know this anime. No idea what this towers. one is. This one's a weird one, and I'm not quite sure. I think that was like a random conspiracy meme of, you know, 5G towers, brother. Sure, how to describe it. 7G towers cause the fucking apocalypse. Everyone above a certain age gets transformed into talking animals for some reason. And a bunch of girls decide to travel through the wastelands of this ruined world. Connect oh, this is a train to the end of the world. Oh, that's what the plot is. Oh, because I, I saw this and I think this is like another cute girls doing cute things in the poster, right? You see cute girls on the train, but... Usually they have like a hook, like a bait in episode one. And I think there was some other anime that did the same shit and it turned out to be some kind of like zombie apocalypse or something, right? In this anime, right? I, I think that the twist is like, you're in like an apocalyptic setting? ...through the last remnants of civilization. Oh my god, it's a strand type anime. At first I thought this was going to be a girl's last tour kind of deal. Cute girls vibing in a post-apocalyptic setting, okay. but I don't know. Are they here to survive or are they just chilling? Something about the vibe seems kind of off and I'm half expecting some kind of dark twist to hit at any moment. Okay. Oh, put tie-dye gig, mark. Unnamed memory. Uh, language that I don't understand. Is this Tagalog? I, I don't know. I'm sorry if I don't know this language. Dark twist to hit at any moment. Oh, put... Don't know, sorry. Tai Dai Gig Mark. Unnamed memory. What what Looks language like does Gigok speak? Kind of Actually, it's Thai. Okay, it's Thai. What? So is Gigok is Thai? He's from Thailand? Well more you know, not not he can be something else and still speak Thai, but I was wondering. What what is Gigok? Gigok's from Thailand? Okay. Gigok's from the U <laughs> No of course Gigok is from the UK! Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I'm from Canada. <laughs> but like I'm Korean, you know, I <laughs> know. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Deceptively old, but still absolutely adorable witch being visited by an absolute giga chad of a mm. prince, hoping she can help Oscar. him break a curse that causes anyone he marries to die. Yes, this is a man blessed with infinite riz, but cursed with no bitches. The solution she comes. Wait, to wait, wait. Uh, no bitches. Wait, that was a that was a rent a girlfriend. That's the girl, rent a girlfriend guy right over here, right? Yeah. No bitches. <laughs> Dude, the fucking. Uh, Two dichotomies, right, of the harem uh, landscape. Look at this. Curse with you got fucking Chad Taro, Giga Chad Ren Taro, and you got fucking this piece of shit on the right. <laughs> Chad Taro, I can't wait for 100 girlfriends to come back. This anime, Unnamed Memory, actually pretty good. Actually pretty good. Main character, Oscar, such a Giga Chad. So confident in himself. He is not uh, the, the typical rom-com. Like, the, for example, this guy right over here, right? Fucking idiot. Insecure, just nervous piece of shit. 
more realistic, I guess, depiction of a guy. But Oscar has just been a super refreshing take on a main character that's so dominant and confident in himself. And the whole show, too, there's like a battle. There's not really a... It's not focused on the battle, but they can do the power fantasy stuff. And all the witches and all the different plots and the mysteries is looking pretty good. Definitely an anime worth checking out. No bitches. The solution she comes up with? Marry a girl strong enough to grandma. withstand the curse. Great grandma. This is crazy. This line was fucking insane. We're asking her, like, listen, I can't fuck a grandma and deliver a safe baby. What about a child? And Tinashe's like, well, she's a child. You can just groom her and be her ideal woman. I'm like, what the fuck did you just say, Tinasha? Surprise, this shit didn't get fucking cancelled here, bro. So many people will take a little fucking scene out of context in Mushoku Tensei. But Tinasha says groom a child and nobody fucking blinks, man. Uh-oh. This man is one scene away from a ukulele apology video. This seems like it's going to be one of those dialogue-heavy shows that relies on witty banter and chemistry between the main duo and their developing romance. And hey, this is also endorsed by the ReZero creator himself, which could mean- What? In a note from the author of ReZero, Tape Nagatsuki assures readers of author, Furumiya is able to pull off this new development well, and maybe she can. Really? Okay, I mean, the author of ReZero is saying this shit's peak, maybe it is? This could turn into something really good, or he just really, really likes witches. Speaking of- Witches in ReZero? Witches in name memory. Paid advertisement! Nah, 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 there's a collusion here! Okay, we got another- And here's a theme I want you to focus on, right? Unnamed Memory is a rom-com. Unnamed Memory? Well, it's not a rom-com. It's like rom-drama? Nah, forget that part. I want you to focus on the romance part. I'm realizing that rom romance element in a high school setting, in a Japanese high school medical setting, we've gotten so much of it, people are fucking tired of it. But- not just anime on their memories, but the Elf Bride over here too, Arkham's Dilemma, Elf Bride. The common theme here is that the romance element is in a native isekai setting. And suddenly, it's a lot more interesting. And I'm not crazy for saying this, but I think that the formula is, put some kind of overused fucking genre, some trope, some kind of thing, and then put it in this fantasy, sorry, native isekai setting, and it just fucking works. I am waiting for a sports anime in a native isekai setting. Imagine that. Just make up a fucking sport. Fucking native isekai sports genre, bro. Really likes witches. Speaking of cute romances, we have an absolutely adorable love story guaranteed to warm the heart about a socially awkward demon lord who has absolutely no interest in women falling in love at first sight with a cute, innocent elf girl. Oh. Yeah, pretty much what is this? This is an acoustic arc demon trying to riz up a suicidal elf slave. Pretty much. Oh. She's apprehensive about his intentions at first, but he's so socially inept that he can't properly express his feelings. But slowly, over time, they come to understand one another and really start to care about each other. Yeah, and then he fucking tells her to leave, pack the fucking bags and get the fuck out of my house. A little bit of a spoiler, but you know, that gets resolved. Don't worry, don't worry. Oh, okay, that sounds pretty cute. Yeah, you know, it's just a really wholesome romance about a slave and her owner. What? What? The f Ah, we did buy her. We used up 1 million gold or whatever, all his fucking, you know, his life savings. And that's the thing about Isekai. It's not even Isekai, actually. This is just fantasy setting, native Isekai. There's always gonna be some slavery system. There's always gonna be some fucked up shit going on in these fantasy worlds, bro. It's like, man, what am I supposed to do? Fable. Okay, this is a title I've heard some great things about. A world-class assassin is forced to go into hiding and live a normal life and has to learn how to use his very particular set of skills to solve every wacky... Is bro actually microbing his gun? What? Wait, 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 what? what? Every... Nah, it's just, it's just a gun storage, right? Microwave gun storage. Wacky situation he's involved in without killing anyone. Just basically John Wick if it was a comedy set in the Yakuza universe. Comedy everyone, John Wick. I mean, everyone Bald. I've met who's read the manga only has amazing things to say about this. Okay. Which, of course, means this was cursed to have the dullest, blandest looking anime adaptation you could ask for. I'm just saying, it shows like this that give Read the Manga Bros the fuel to wake up in the morning and continue to be an... That's his friend, right, from the podcast? Absolute menace to society. Oh, wow. A show of... And that's the thing about animes, right? I, I think a lot of uh, classroom of the elite uh, enjoyers will agree with this, but essentially, when you realize that the anime is just a tool to advertise for the light novel, that's what classroom of the elite is. We fucking got used. We're watching... 
they fucking abused us with this fucking tool, bro, to advertise for the light novel. And most anime is like even Fable, huh? I guess it got just trounced, but the manga is kind of where it's at. So it's like, yeah, we're going to give you some shitty adaptation and, you know, go check out the manga. But I would argue like a shitty adaptation would not compel the consumer to seek out the manga. Would they? I don't know. I feel like if the adaptation actually was good and hooked them, then they're willing to seek out the future content, right? About women's bicycle racing. I wonder what this is going to be like. Yuri. Yuri. Damn. What, an <laughs> what the fuck was that dial? <laughs> no, he had to edit that shit, right? He 100% edited it. So no one said anything. They were just, uh, uh. Amazing show about women's bicycle racing. I wonder what pressing sure. topic anime will tackle next. Ah, woman basketball. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Jesus, what the fuck? I know that the WMB gets a lot of fucking shit, but goddamn. Women's basketball. Kuroko no basket. But girls, would people watch that? Yeah, I think so. In real life, probably not. But like an anime, if they just made them a bunch of waifus and fighting, then yeah, maybe. All right, we have peak number eight, Kaiju Eight, the shonen of the season right now. I would argue Kaiju Eight better than My Hero Academia. Maybe it's not a fair comparison. I just say it's better because it's the first season of the anime. It's coming in hot, while My Hero Academia has kind of a lackluster middle part that kind of made the anime fans mad. So. I don't know. Kaiju 8. Check it out. Okay, enough of this seasonal filler crap. Let's see some of the heavy hitters. Kaiju number 8. Yeah. The hottest new Shonen Jump adaptation that is looking like it's going to be the hot new talk of the town. IG are once again looking like they're bringing their A-game. Production values look damn good. Somehow they've got Youngblood doing the opening and freaking Young Republic doing the ending. And people were mad about that, I think. I think that people were genuinely upset that Youngblood and One Republic doing the opening and the ending for this anime was not something they expected because well it, it, they didn't like it because it's not the traditional anime opening or ending right it's like the you know the anime opening ending has a textbook right you see any anime openings you already kind of like heard like a hundred thousand of different variations and then comes in with a different angle from these different western artists and i think a lot of weebs are mad about it is my opinion it was great regardless. It looks like some high profile people have put a lot of chips into this production. So let's see what they've been cooking. Nipple piss! Yeah, nipple piss. You can milk anything with nipples. We've got a world yep. getting invaded by kaijus, a special task force of super soldiers who hunt them down, an old man protagonist at the decrepit age of 32 who gets... Hot take? Or maybe not a hot take. But do you think that Kaiju 8 making their main character 32 is a strategic play by the anime industry because they realize that the, pe the kids that grew up with Naruto, One Piece, Bleach, Dragon Ball obviously got older. And now they're kind of, instead of giving like a 14 year old main character like they used to be, they're putting themselves in a position where they can relate to again, but instead as like a young professional who kind of lost sight of his dreams and wants to achieve it back again. I think that they might be doing this, tugging at the heartstrings of an aging audience that they once used to have control over. Maybe, maybe a conspiracy theory, but I don't know. It's just like a shonen show. The main character needs to be relatable to the audience. That's why it's usually like a young kid, right? High school kid. But with this, it's like, did they realize that, you know, the kids have grown up and we're just doing this? It's turned into a mini kaiju and applies to join the very task force that's supposed to hunt him down. It's a shonen action show. You know how it goes down. But I'll say it's goddamn refreshing to see a hot shonen jump show that has a mature older protagonist as opposed to the millionth teenage high schooler. And I think Giguk, as the boomer he is, he's not, he's not, but, you know, I think he can actually relate to the uh, main character, because obviously he relates to this guy, Hibiki Kafka, more than, let's say, Naruto right now, in the, you know, in fucking season one, or like, you know, all the, like, high school kids in the shonen shows. Somehow this anime is premiering on Twitter, um, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> What? Every week, so I can't wait to I'll see never such riveting X. discourse about this show, such as this episode was mid and pussy in bio. Check out. <laughs>
<laughs> How many times have you seen this shit on Twitter, bro? It's and <laughs> you open a fucking tweet from somebody and you have some hidden comments, you open it up. It's always this shit, bro. It's always this shit, man. Check out this show about a kaiju that beats up other kaijus. If you need a change of pace from ghoul that beats up other ghouls, titan that beats up other titans, devil that beats up other devils. Hold up! He's right! This is a fucking repeated element over and over again! And of course, dipshit that beats up other dipshits. But if that's not enough... Did he just call... Gojo? Sorry, I... Go Gojo Satoru is a dipshit, but did you just call... The king of curses? The fucking... Wait, 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 where is he? The fucking... Jogo! Did you just call Jogo a dipshit? Nah, bro. Nah, bro. Respect my man Jogo. Bro has achieved things that no one else has in the Jujutsu Kaisen realm. My man survived the strongest modern sorcerer, Gojo Satoru, who was not only born with Mugen, but with the fucking transcendent dies or some shit. Domain expansion, not once, but fucking twice? Awaken Skuna? Challenge Skuna? And then got acknowledged from Skuna? Nah. Jogo facts over feats is it no i i, I forget the wording of it but basically it's just like you know if you take the actual evidence the feats that's happening on screen and you can kind of exaggerate what's going on and say yeah this character is better come on let's go but if that's not enough here's the other action show to look out for sentai daishikaku yes, or go yes. go loser rangers takes place in a world where the monsters of the week battles in the world of super sentai or power rangers have been transformed into a commercialized event where the rangers who are secretly arrogant assholes abusing their powers fight scripted battles against powerless goons who are forced to enact humiliating defeat after defeat every single week Sunday. to a crowd that is none the wiser yeah. But one day, one of the goons has had enough. D. So what if he's just cannon fodder? So what if he's completely powerless against the might of the asshole rangers? He's gonna find a way to take down his oppressors and restore the battle. Is he playing the fucking Russian anthem right now? This is the Russian national anthem, powerless right? Powerless against the might of the asshole rangers. He's gonna find a way to take down his oppressors and restore the balance of power. In short, this is the boys, but with power rangers. Maybe gotten spoiled there, but I agree. This show right here, Go Go Loser Ranger, like... I think of all the anime that I've seen, it is the most unique, the most interesting, so refreshing. And I think the plot's actually good. I think this is safely my top three weekly anime right now. Even with all these giga titles like Kaiju Ape, Mushoku Tensei, you know, Reincarnate as a Slime, Date Alive, Konosuba. I think that this actually takes top three. It's just so different. The environment, the plot, it's just, I'm so used to the same plot of, you know, Isekai world, fucking Japan high school setting, you know, it, it, it gets a little old, right? So this show comes out of nowhere with such a refreshing plot that I, I've never seen before, but apparently, if you've seen the boys, that this is basically the plot, but I think this is fucking great. I think that Sentai, Go Go Loser Rangers, this shit's peak, you should watch it. With Power Rangers. Morphin time! Triceratops! Saber 2 Tiger! The transformations were kind of sus back in the day, right? Like, Asian Ranger would be like Yellow Ranger. Black guy would be Black Ranger. Uh, yeah, what, what other races? There's kind of some connection with the skin tone and, you know, the color Ranger. <laughs> back in the day, they didn't give a fuck, right? And no, no, it's not racist to, you know, if the guy is black, he gets a Black Ranger suit. If the, if the girl is Asian, she gets a yellow... It, it, that in itself is not racist, but you, you do kind of see the, the stereotypes at play, right? Right? So you're saying that's a portal to another world? Yes. Salad bowl. Think carefully about this. You'd be saying goodbye to your loved ones, your life. You're going to leave behind everyone you know. Jump everyone in. you've ever loved. Geronimo! Well, what better way to start the isekai train than the cute little Moe reverse, reverse isekai. isekai comedy starring an older, mature detective becoming the unwilling partner to some cute little dipshit anime girl. This feels like the spiritual successor to Hinamatsuri with an extra da- I keep getting that comparison. People like, oh my god, this is just like Hinamatsuri. And I think the biggest, biggest con uh, comparison was how Livia was homeless and apparently there's like another homeless girl in Hinamatsuri that's really funny. Ash of- <laughs> Cause nothing screams Hinamatsuri like cute girls doing homeless things, and nothing screams yes. like... She's pretty strong, domestic yeah? Domestic terrorism. Hey, coming right after the... Salad Bowl was pretty good. I checked one episode out, but you know, in the terms of in, in the game of anime reactions, you gotta watch what your audience, what the algorithm deems your audience. I think you should check it out. Unfortunately, I'm not able to continue it, but definitely check it out.
it's fun. It's hilly. it's Libya being homeless is just funny to me. I'm not sure how long it was going to take, but how much longer that it's going to be not boring. But I found it very cute. Things and nothing screams oh, yeah, yeah. like explosion. A hey, coming right Viral off hit. the start of my Manwa brain rot journey. Because if you think that every isekai has slavery, get ready for Manwa showing that the entire population of Korea has experienced every case of bullying that has ever been documented in the history of mankind. Here's this is actually kind of true. No, like webtoons, Korean dramas, the bullying in high school, it is like insane. And I didn't go to high school in Korea, so I wouldn't know, but I would think that it's exaggerating. And the bullying is like fucking war crimes. Motherfuckers are like flaying the skins of these high school students, burning motherfuckers, like branding them. Like it's crazy the degree of bullying that's depicted in webtoons and Korean drama, man. Here's a guy starting a YouTube career by learning how to throw hands against his bullies and uploading it. Kimchi slap. As a YouTuber, this is totally unrealistic. I mean, clearly this content would get instantly demonetized, age restricted. Poss True. He even talked about it, right? They were like, yo, we're going to get the yellow dollar ad, which means limited ads, meaning you're not going to get any ad revenue off the video. They actually talk about interesting themes that, you know, I as a, a YouTuber, which I think is a pretty cringe title, but if you, you know, upload videos on YouTube and you do content creation, you kind of, you can relate to it. Possibly community striked. There is no way anyone would be able to make a single cent off this, let alone an online career. How the hell am I supposed to take this serious? Okay, actually, no, not. totally believable. I wonder <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Just stream on kick. No, yeah, they're doing it. They're doing on YouTube the entire time. Just, just, just stream on kick, bro. I wonder what the actual recommended way to deal with bullies is. How to deal with bullies? How to deal with bullies? Maybe a hot take. But if my kid was getting bullied, first of all, I would hope that it would never even get to that place because I would have taught the kid how to defend himself. If you're getting bullied, I feel like I have no enemies is not the right path sometimes. I feel like I have no enemies only works if you're actually strong enough to enact that philosophy. You need to be able to defend yourself. No, we don't do American breathing style. Like, no, no, no. We, we don't do American breathing style. We don't do that. But I feel like whenever bullying is happening, you should be able to defend yourself. And whoever the, the one that started it, I'll fucking hit him back. That's my philosophy. And if my kid did that, I'd be proud. If you're being bullied, reach out to an adult that you know and trust. There's a lot of ways Not to gonna work. No, oh, Windbreaker. Hello. Tell an adult, or if you feel safe to do so. Are we about to get to the scene in Windbreaker where all the fucking old people are cheering at the kids beating each other up? Wait, wait, wait. Tell an adult, or if you feel safe to do so, tell the bully to stop. If everyone works together. Let's fuck him up. I hope he shows the scene where all the adults here are just cheering. This first episode did go fucking crazy, huh? Sakura really did like a 1v50. Another delinquent no, I feel like there's a missed opportunity. Because in this episode specifically, all the townspeople are actually cheering, you know, for fucking gang violence. It's not gang violence, but you know. Whose manga is apparently inspired by Tokyo Revengers. The better Tokyo Revengers. Now we kind of say that for the, you know, the outrage to, for negative engagement because apparently it's not really the same. But it is in the sense that it's just both delinquent anime and, you know, the Takamichi, whatever the main character of, you know, Tokyo Revengers is pretty much, you know, the fucking annoying piece of shit that we have, except our annoying kid is a sidekick and not the main character. Which makes me feel kind of bad because this single fight scene is already leagues above anything the Tokyo Revengers anime has showcased in three seasons. I'm not I went as far to say, is this better fighting than solo leveling? Oh, people were mad. I'm normally too big on this genre, but if the production values continue like this, I might just have to stick it out. I think what I found most amusing about this isn't actually the fighting or violence. It's the idea of a street full of grown adults cheering yeah, their fucking this hearts thing. out at the sight of a bunch of kids beating the shit out of each other. Or no, 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 there's a more context. It's not random strangers cheering for gang violence, right? It's, it's not, right? It seems like it, it's not. It's more of... This is a community that's constant attack by delinquents and the people that live here, the adults, their shops and shit, they get fucked up. So what happens? We have our own boys that comes in and defend the town. And while defending, we are rooting for the protectors, Bo Bofurin, right? But it does kind of look like just a bunch of, bunch of <laughs> bored old people just like, Whoa! Just, you know, 14 year olds just fucking each other up, but dude. No, just another average day for Birmingham yeah, Revengers. Awesome. That's like a UK meme I don't understand, I think. Level two appraisal? Level two, level two sheet. Chilling in another world. Isekai? 
How'd you know? How did you know? Maybe the slave whip. <laughs> Nothing like good old prejudice, slavery, or racism in isekai. But uh, this one, he is not from Japan, though. It's like a fantasy world to another fantasy world, right? Isekai. So we got another guy in a fantasy world that's yeah. clearly been transported. Wait. Wait, 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 wait. Summoned. He got transported Into from a different a fantasy yeah. world that yeah. had slavery in it to another fantasy world that doesn't have it. Wait, Pretty and much. he doesn't get overpowered at level one, but level two. two. Yes. Guys, yes. I don't think the guy is ready for this much innovation. Hey, it's an anime about. No, I feel like what Giga said, said there based off of episode one, I completely agree. Episode one of this was like, what the fuck am I watching? It hit all the fucking common tropes, right? The fucking isekai character gets summoned. Well, the different thing is that he's not from Japan. He's from a different native isekai world to a different native isekai. And then, you know, he doesn't get OP immediately. And there's a little bit of a gender bender element to it. And I thought episode one was so fucking mid. And I'm like, why are people watching this? And I posted a video and it did really well. Because the manga readers had the foresight. The manga readers understood that in another episode, a certain character named Fenris that would scream Danna-sama over and over again would hard carry the show. And then beyond that, what happened? Bariroza and Gol, the demon lord raising up one of the girls. I might be spoiling a little bit, but this show is less about the power fantasy and more about the comedic tones, more slice of life elements, more rooting for the bad guys kind of because the demons are kind of good and the humans are kind of bad. I find level two cheat amazing after Fenris showed up. Beyond just the waifu bait, I think it's an actual pretty good show. Guys, I don't think the is ready for this much innovation. Hey, it's an anime about some cute girls who start some- I don't know this one. The Many Sides Voice Actor Radio. Podcast or radio show. Now this is my neck of the woods. I wonder what they're gonna talk about. First question is your favorite anime. What is my favorite anime honestly i can't even fucking answer that i feel like reactors are kind of uh warped by the analytics and whatever gets higher numbers kind of makes them think that that's their favorite anime so i'll give you a compromised you know answer i think that uh, a lot of recency bias comes to effect too but right now recently of the shows that we've launched what really s strikes dear to me i think in the rom-com section kaguya sama tomo chan as a girl was really nice in the isekai section you know, fucking Eminence and Shadow, obviously. Eminence and Shadow's always fucking been there for me, right? On the East, and what, what, what else is there? Obviously, we have so many other Isekais, right? Like Tensei, Remu, Shoku, Tensei, blah, blah, blah. There's too many. Spider anime was also good. There's too many. I don't have a definitive favorite anime. I could probably give you, like, a list of, like, top 10 in, like, a specific genre, though. Oh, no. Well, this podcast is going nowhere. This one's pretty cute, actually. I'm already liking the chemistry between the main two, and it's a pretty unique set. Chemistry? Yeah, I'm already liking the chemistry between the main Chemistry. I, I see chemistry, all right, okay. Two, and it's a pretty unique setting as well. So you know what? I might just have to give this one a ch- Yuri Wait voice a acting? Is this what? A, are they Idol? trying to trick me into Oshinoko. watching an idol anime? This is Oshinoko. So they're pivoting into idol shit? What is it? What is it? <laughs> nice try, but you're gonna have to do better than that. Girls band cry. All right, I know anime fans are as allergic to CG as I am allergic to pizza. Oh, what the- Cross, but honestly- Wait. Do you actually not eat pizza? That is a fucking... Dude. Some people, like... Do you guys not eat pizza crust? Some people hate it. I feel like pizza crust is so good. I think that the reason people don't like pizza crust is because they don't understand how to eat the fucking pizza, right? Because, like, if they have the pizza right here... If, if, they, if they have the pizza right here... Let me show you this. This is the crust. What people do is that they eat from the bottom up until there's just a crust left. And obviously by that point, if you just eat the crust, it's just a breadstick. It's not good. But the point is, you're supposed to eat it. And at some point, you instead of going vertically, you go horizontal. So you, each bite still has that crust, but with the pizza stuff on it. So it's like a different texture. It adds to the, 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 the experience. But like, motherfuckers, you, you're just eating it wrong. And then you got, you're left with this, the, the great, you know, the crust bit, the, cr the crunchy part. But it's like, you're just utilizing it wrong, man. It's a cross, but honestly, this one looks all right. Yeah, it's okay. It's not studio. Is, 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 is this Beastars? I, I, <laughs> is, is this Beastars? What is this? Or, or, orange? Is that the studio or the anime? <laughs> what no, shot. this is actually Beastars? No! 
<laughs> is this an omega? Is this an omega in heat? Am I, is the pheromones, you know, activated right now for the alpha not to be able to resist the omega's pheromones and heat? Orange level, some things look a little rough oh around the edges, but we've come a long way from Berserk 2016, especially when it comes to these micro expressions and facial animations that give the character. You know what? If an anime is committing to all CGI, I probably wouldn't crit criticize it or, you know, give a judgment like I usually do, like to regular anime where. They, cause like you know, like I think in a regular Magic High School is a prime example right now. Data Live does that shit too, but in a regular Magic High School, what I've noticed this season is that the focus is on the main characters and some of the background scenes, right? The different assets and stuff. It's always CGI, and it doesn't really break my immersion. Maybe it does because I just call it. I pause it. It's more for content. Me just yelling CGI, but I'm definitely a lot more judgmental on shows where most of the things is you know not CGI. Then you just have CGI just coming out of nowhere and ruining the immersion. But if a show is just like fully intent, this is a CGI anime, then could be decent, could be. It's just so much more life. It looks like the industry is finally learning how to work towards their strengths. And you know, I'm a sucker for music There's anime, strength. especially CGI. when it comes to rock music. So you know what? Fuck you, CG haters. I'm gonna give this one a chance. All right. Okay. Anime, That's pretty good. It? Yeah, it is. Thank you. Wait, Jellyfish. Where's Jellyfish at? Yeah, we, we've had a bunch of these, you know, band girls trying to go to the idol route. Where's Jellyfish at? Thank you! What huh. the fuck? Wait! <laughs> Is this actually real? Thank you. Thank you! Yeah. Yeah, she is flipping people up. Maybe there's a bunch of haters in this scene and she's just fucking, you know, saying, fuck you. Huh, this one feels oddly I'm reminiscent. I'm addicted to you. Plain, average looking girl with little romantic interest gives an umbrella to this random person that turns out to be an Ikeman! Ikeman! Uh, what's an Ikeman? So this is an Ikeman trope, huh? What is the Ikeman? Let, let, let me see this. I'm not I'm not too well versed into the, the B, not the BL, but like shoujo tropes. What is brother this? To this random person that turns out to be an Ikeman! Ikeman. Good looking man. How dare they be good looking? But it's just like Shoujo main character is just like the hottest dude ever. He's so fucking cool. Ikeman! And then the popular guy suddenly shows interest in her. I mean, it seems like Shoujo. Isn't this Horimiya? Nah, I'm probably gonna get fucking shit on for yelling this Horimiya. I only say this because the main character in Horimiya, sorry, the guy has like longish hair and has like piercings too, right? And then it's, that's it. It's, it's just the way that the guy looks, right? Everything besides that, not the same at all, but it's like, isn't this Horimiya? <laughs> romances are getting a resurgence recently, and this feels like it's a gender reverse of whatever. Nah, nah, nah. Get me out of this Japanese high school setting. Put me into native isekai. He came at, so, so it'd be elf. So I don't know how this would be in, you know, fantasy. I'm sorry, a native isekai rom-com. But I, I think that if you put this in a different environment, like a native isekai, I might actually watch it. But by itself, probably not. But this genre is... Dangerous in my heart. Angel next door, spoils me run. And uh, what's on the left? This is Kubo, right? This is Kubo. Lost all no, we we did not watch Dangerous in My Heart, even though this is probably the best out of these three, right? I don't know, but uh, oh, just uh, just two two just. I think that uh, the 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 left and the right, right? I haven't seen Dangerous, but the main character basically is the common trope of weak, submissive, fucking beta male, short, fucking got nothing going for them, unpopular, no friends, no money, no nothing. But then the girl just always fucking gets in there, right? The girl is so alpha and will kind of pull you out of the shell and save you. That's a clear strategic way of, uh, you know, marketing and appealing to a certain demographic that would watch this show. In the middle, I don't think that the main character from Angel Next Door, I suppose, uh, you mean Rotten, was like that at all. I think the main character was totally different. I think he was an actual fucking Giga Chat. Now, I haven't watched Dangers in My Heart. Maybe the main character there is, a, you know, maybe he is just a fucking limp noodle. Maybe he's not. I don't know. But I know for sure this motherfucker here, <laughs> Hiraishi, Shiraishi guy, holy shit, dude. There's Usagi drop with golf. <clears throat> There's Barakamon with golf. Ikeman! Ikeman! John, did you fucking not some. We just skipped like two fucking animes. There's something about a golf. It's some references that I don't understand. There's Usagi drop with golf. <clears throat> Usagi drop. Uh, golf anime that seems to be like this. There's Barakamon with golf. Barakamon. I don't even know what the fuck this is. What the fuck is an Usagi drop? I don't know. I'm not a Ikeman! Ikeman! John, did you fucking nuts on the- 
EK Goblin. The logo again. There's another anime in the ever-growing Re series. Re Monster, an isekai with no trucks, no death by overwork, just a good old. F by the way, when did the Re series, the Re something branding of anime happen? Did it happen after Re Zero? Is everyone branding their anime title as Re something to kind of just make it seem familiar to like a, a, a show that's already popular? Were there any shows before ReZero that they started doing this, or was it after ReZero? Fashion stabbing. Finally, the Brixton Isekai experience has got some representation. All right, so he's reincarnated as a goblin this yep. time, but you know what? I've seen Goblin Slayer. I won't fall for your goblin propaganda. Wait, she's Gob a goblin. Uh he watched the most recent episode! This bit- No, 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 this is Gobni, you know, turning into- oh, uh, Hope, What is it? Oh, I, I forget her fucking name. But this is like yesterday. This is literally fucking yesterday. Bro fucking made this video. I thought he would have made this like weeks ago, but he had- He watched this shit. He watched- Goblin? Cause she about to be Goblin <laughs> these days. <laughs> these nuts! <laughs> Seventh print. Goblin what? Goblin what? Oh, I've seen Goblin Slayer. I won't fall for your Goblin propaganda. Wait. Ding, ding, She's dong. She's a Goblin? Cause she about to be goblin these ding, ding, dong, like King Kong. seven crazy opening. That opening might be even more controversial than Kaiju 8. I don't know. That opening is it's pretty bad. But I'm getting to a point where Stockholm syndrome is hitting in and we're like fucking five weeks since. So now we're just like memeing and saying, you know what? Remonster opening is the best opening of this season. Seventh Prince. This is one of those shows that seems self-aware enough to play into its stupidly overpowered protagonist, but I can't shake the feeling. Hmm. Hmm. Gee. Can't shake the feeling what? What do you can't you shake the feeling, Gigguk? What do you think about this 10-year-old boy with childbearing hips? What do you think, Gigguk? That if I leave this running too long in the background, this kid's gonna start telling me that gliding should be faster. We've got another kingdom building isekai. I'm okay. not gonna lie. I saw the first episode. Wait, that's it? He, he's, he's not gonna talk about the show. I guess it's probably smarter, right? Probably smarter to not, kind of not talk about, you know, the controversial aspects of this show and being like, yo, come on, like, 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 like this kid, like, come on. What, what did Kiko say? Around this kid's gonna start telling me that gliding should be faster. We're gonna gliding should be faster. That's it. Yeah, it's show debate. It's show debate. Another kingdom building isekai. I'm not gonna lie. I saw the first episode of this. It Appraisal isekai. This is another isekai that I thought would be just a generic piece of shit, like level two cheat, but actually surprised me. It was a, uh, it's a Genshin impact joke. Okay, my bad. Brother, he should have fucking pulled Xian Yun then. Xian Yun has a gliding boost. Anyways, um, Appraisal isekai. This is like, uh, I thought it was unique because instead of the main character being OP, it's like everyone around him that he's kind of raising up by scouting their talents and making them better, right? And it does hit on themes, many deeper themes like, I don't know, socioeconomic status, the wealth gap, people in poverty, raising them out of poverty. There, there, there's a lot of like delicate themes that most of these guys don't really talk about that this show does. And I think it is, I think, worth a watch. Reminded me of the civilization aspect of slime and realist hero. And then I ended up reading every single available chapter in one night. Really? Good. Hey, you remember that old- He read everything. Goddamn. Okay, must be pretty good then. Isekai called Gates. Now the New Gate. Now presenting The New Gate. Well, actually, this has nothing to do with Gates. And also, it's not really new because this- It's New Game Plus. Because this is like, not an isekai. Well, no, if you consider an isekai to be an other world, or if you consider this game to be another world, just like an SAO, then by that logic, it is indeed an isekai. But the special thing about this is that there's like a time skip that happens after everyone logs off. So you're the only character in this game 500 years into the future where everyone else is like a sentient NPC, which I think a lot of people are saying it's pretty much just like Overlord, right? This is based on the web novel that came out in 2013. Um, so now presenting the hottest new isekai of the season. The. All right, all right, that's enough isekai. Wake the. me up when we get a genre that hasn't already been done to death. You know what? I think that the new gate, it is not that special to me. We got to let it cook more. But so far, nothing. Like, it's just heavily carried by Shini, who hasn't even shown up. So maybe it'll be the same thing of like, Level 2 cheat, where Fenris showed up, and I was like, oh, I fucking see it, right? Shni hasn't shown up yet. So far, it's just been, all right, we're just kind of just farming. I get it, he's strong, okay, but besides that, I don't feel uh, the same sort of enjoyment I get from Newgate compared to, let's say, Level 2 cheats, 
Remaster, Seventh Shota, but we'll let it cook. We'll let it cook. Sakai, wake me up when we get a genre that hasn't already been done to death. Regression! Oh my god, it's a regression anime! Hey bro, have you seen this meme? <laughs> so this is a grandpa and grandma regression anime. Grandpa and grandma basically like gets younger and it's like that, huh? I, we didn't check it out. I hear a lot of people sing it's kind of decent, but uh, if it's not good, you'll let me know about it, right? And we'll watch it, right? It's a community series. Anime! Hey bro, have you seen this meme before? Oh no, I don't usually... Hey bro, have you seen these eludes of my little sister? Go on the internet. What? What's going on? The test is simple. A virtual gaze from the phone, and you die. What's on the phone? Oh, this is Gom Jabbar. This is Dune. If you haven't watched Dune, this is Mother Reverend Helen Mohaim. You know, the Paul is saying, "Neil, put your right hand in the box. <laughs> Before you is the Gom Jabbar. Instant poison. A single touch, and you're dead. Basically, right? Hey." <laughs> There it is. Oh! A lot of sussy things. A lot, of, a lot of sussy things with this Doom popcorn bucket. The shape of it doesn't help. Right? It's like, bro. What the fuck are people putting in that, bro? Sussy! Wait, 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 wait. How's it the Doom popcorn? British food be like? Why is Sonic fandom so Locked in the head, bro. What is up with Sonic, bro? If Kaiju number eight Shrek wasn't two. enough for your Shonen Jump fix, there's Yozakura Family. This one looks like it's going to be more than the especially for jump standards. Best way I can describe this is we've got some spy family s shenanigans about a poor kid unknowingly becoming a part of and trying to survive some Looney Tunes version of the Zoldic family. We've got Walmart Alphonse Elric, a Hyper Lolly, Siscon Sebastian. Oh, there's a lower accurate gacha gamer. Hey, Blue Arc. <laughs> Lore accurate gotcha gamer in a trash can. <laughs> I think Yozakura family, um, it is a shonen jump, so I guess it is, you know, technically a shonen title. It's just a shonen, it refers to like it's like product meant for like young boys, right? So it, they're more likely wanted to watch shit like Boruto, I don't know what the fuck, My Hero Academia, Jujutsu Kaisen and stuff. So this is definitely niche in the sense that it comes at a different type of combat. It's like spies, right? So far, there hasn't been enough. I liked episode one and two, but so far it's, and then after that, it's been kind of slow. We're just kind of setting up, trying to figure out overall what the plot is. Who are the real antagonists, right? We, we got to let this shit cook. Like you cannot judge a shonen show based off the first couple episodes, even though I would argue that you need to do a good job in hooking the audience. And you can't just say, bro, one piece gets so good. 300 episodes in, you just have to watch 300 episodes. No, that's an exaggeration, but you know what I mean, right? I feel like you need to be able to capture that audience and make them stay because no matter how peak your show is if the first couple episodes it's bad pacing and kind of bad you kind of miss the market but this show so far it's been all right i'm enjoying watching it you're a gacha gamer hey blue archive finally a gacha game adaptation i'm not college girls not high school familiar with <laughs> yet i'm gonna be real i recognize way too many of these characters for a franchise i know absolutely why do you know these characters if you haven't watched the anime you got Blue Archive tag saved? Do you? What sites? What sites do you have as saved? Hmm? Hmm? Absolutely nothing about. When I covered this in my stream, they seem to be a- Yeah, yeah, what is this? Everyone just keeps fucking crying? This is basically it. Every fucking Blue Archive stream or vid YouTube video, everyone just like- Whoa! Whoa! And people are crying over and over and over. And it's some kind of inside meme. It's some inside meme I don't know just the yet. Memes floating around that just went over my head. I've been told that apparently Cunny or something is a big- Who the fuck is Cunny? People keep saying Cunny enjoys rejoice. Whoa! And I'm like, what the fuck is this? Meme in the community, which I assume means these girls are cute and funny, right? Oh, is that it? Cunny's just cute and funny. I thought it was like a character that's gonna show up later. Oh. Oh my god. Okay, so what do you- This is the show that Freshest Anime told me to check out because he said, Kaka, bro, you, you, bro, you're gonna enjoy episode one. I'm like, why? It's like, trust me. Huge titties. Mystery show! Huge titties though, right? Looking for in this character design? Oh, you know, just something standard for the industry. Understood. Nah, we're not trying to appeal Bigger. to the Blue Archive fan base. You fucking lollycod. You fucking lollycod. I can't believe Blue Archive got called out in a mysterious disappearance segment. Got it. 
Or the Genshin fan base. No problem. <laughs> bigger! No, no, bigger! Look right. You know what? How about you just tell me what you're making here? A VTuber avatar. Oh, there you go! Yada! The most average VTuber titty jiggle. Anyways, jellyfish can't swim in the night. <sighs> this show just had so much potential, and I think it does have potential to do really well. And I think it is a good show. It's just when I say this kind of stuff, I'm talking about simply viewership on YouTube as an anime reaction video, and it just wasn't hidden, man. Another show where you're getting baited for some idol shit, maybe. Let it be known in this episode that there's a poor girl named Miku who got her stage stolen because these two girls kicked her off and you fucking took her live stream hostage to do this performance. Where is she? Been quiet about is, is it here? Let's see it. Where's Miku? Miku is right over here. Miku is right over here. This poster girl. Where's Miku on the right? No, it's not. I thought Miku was over there. I've never exactly been quiet about my aversion towards anime centered around cute girls doing cute things, but there have been more than enough examples in recent years that have slowly turned my opinion around to truly get me excited when the right show comes about. And Jelly Bochi the Rock. And maybe this one is called Bochi the Pebble. Jellyfish Can't no. Swim in the Nights looks to be joining that list. A group of misfits band together, an illustrator that gave up on her passion, a retired idol that wants to prove herself, a composer struggling Stalker. with her own past, Stalker. and finally, crackhead Anya who's trying to make her VTubing career work. <laughs> wait, 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 let's see. I told them I earned enough for my super chat, so I guess this is like her family. We haven't watched this episode, right? But I guess she comes from a pretty well-off family, and her parents don't believe that she can make so basically she's trying to prove them wrong by having this success from content creation is her entire thing. Career works. This gave me a vibe I haven't felt since watching a place further than the universe. Not a single episode has failed to leave me without the biggest grin on my face. This isn't just another show where Q It's cinema. I think this show is actually really good and it touches on themes that a lot of people don't want to like face, right? Because when you're watching anime, you don't want to be reminded that your time is running out. You need to make something of yourself. Are you just going to submit to the, the system, be a cog in the wheel, and just be a regular employee? Are you going to let your dreams die out? Did you ever have dreams in the first place, right? These kind of things is hard to really talk about without, you know, feeling a certain way. And a lot of people, I think, can have a very good lesson from an anime like this. Cute girls do cute things. This yes, I think Data Live is actually being skipped. We have about two minutes, roughly. Roughly a minute and a half left of this video, and I had no, no data live mention. This is cute girls do amazing things, setting up what looks to be an awe-inspiring tale about shooting for your dreams. It's shows like these that get me excited that I'm watching an anime original, not because I can guarantee no spoilers from dickhead manga or light novel readers, but you can tell this is a story that has been purely made for the medium of anime, and that feeling shines through the bloody fantastic visual direction on top of the opening episodes hitting every single emotional beat without fail. This was there is something cracked about this lineup. I think the directors, the animators, basically all the behind the scenes, the names involved are insane. And I think there's like this like trend where if it's cute girl doing cute things, all the fucking best people in the industry get together to like make it good. And I think what this anime is that, right? This was one of my standouts for spring and some of the best direction I found in the season so far. Damn, I wonder what else this guy's directed. Look at all this shit, Holy dude. Holy shit. Eromanga Sensei! That's like a recurring meme in this channel, right? We haven't watched that, but I do remember when Eromanga Sensei aired and he made a couple of videos about it. The prodigal son has returned. <laughs> oh boy. Should we watch this? Cinema, ladies and gentlemen! Ding, ding, dong, like King Kong. Hey, go. Wait, 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 what, what, is, what is this? What did he say? What did he say? Citizen Kane is the Eromanga sensei of film. I don't know what Citizen Kane is, but he's doing a funny comparison. Hey guys, hope you yeah. enjoyed that video. Thank you very much this month too. Author Curtis X. W what is this new AI fucking voice? What? Where's Giga? Else on my as you can probably tell, my voice is a little bit different today. I'm yeah, why? a very busy boy in Australia right now and didn't okay. have enough time to record an outro. Also, right. my editor has decided to be very lazy and is just doing this instead of something more creative to end this video. As 
but the editor himself is the one that made his prompt. So he's kind of like, you know, he's basically doing a little bit of a joke by himself, right? The editor shitting on stuff. But you guys know what to do. Please, guys, go to Giggle's channel. We always want to support small channels in this community. Giggle only has 3.5 million subs. But if you go there, like his video and stuff to his channel, maybe you can hit 4 million views. I think um, I would have liked him to talk about more of the Isekai sequel that's been airing right now, but you know, just the focus is on, you know, the first seasons of all the series. And yes, this season is fucking cracked. I would definitely recommend you to watch Remaster, Level 2 Cheat, Seven Shoda. I, honestly, memes aside, I think Jellyfish is probably one of the best animes that's airing right now that you should probably watch. Yeah.